The Vehicle Assembly Building has been a staple at the Kennedy Space Center since its construction in 1966. Since then, some of the most complex spacecraft ever built have been assembled in the more than 3.6 million cubic meters of space. With the end of the shuttle program, it's time for the VAB to go through its next renovation. Spaceflight Insider got a look at some of the major changes happening inside the historic building. It, it is a very interesting time. We are rev revitalizing the building, preparing the vehicle assembly building for the SLS uh, rocket. Uh, this is a perfect time right now to revitalize our systems, increase its capacity to support the heavy lift uh, vehicle. What we have behind here is the 175 ton crane. This uh, crane was used for the shuttle operations. We are going to use it for the new SLS uh, vehicle as well. Uh, right now, during the transition from uh, shuttle program to the SLS program, it's perfect time right now to upgrade a lot of its systems uh, uh, needed uh, revitalization, uh, increased capacity. We have upgraded the controls, we've upgraded the 60 hertz electrical systems, brand new conduits, brand new uh, control systems. As you can see here, being refurbished completely. Uh, it will go up again. Uh, we're we're going to install it uh, in June timeframe. Uh, and this is a major revitalization of uh, one of our many ongoing projects at the Vehicle Assembly Building in the VAB. What you see here is high bay three in the vehicle assembly building. It's going to be the high bay that's going to be used for processing of the SLS vehicle. I want to point out the different heights of the vehicle. Saturn V was processed here. And as you can see is uh, uh, the, the height right below is SLS and that's block one. I do want to point out that SLS block 1B is going to be taller than Saturn V. Uh, and then right below SLS, way down below is shuttle. That gets you a perspective of the different heights of the three vehicles, uh, two that were processed in the vehicle assembly building and our future uh, America's uh, next rocket, the SLS. It's critical, as I mentioned, is a critical component to have uh, platforms to process the SLS. And uh, we determined that the existing platforms for uh, the shuttle uh, it wasn't, it wasn't feasible for the SLS. We used to have uh, platforms here, the shuttle platforms. We have demolished them, uh, left the high bay empty in preparation for the new platforms, the SLS uh, platforms. So we, we decided to redesign the, the platforms and also accommodate any, any vehicle we want. Uh, the, what makes the new platforms unique is what we call the OML insert or the outer mold line inserts, they're interchangeable. So it could be used to fit any vehicle we want. So next program, you know, 20, 30 years from now, if we have a new program that, that has a different shape of vehicle, we can also accommodate that as well. We, we wouldn't have to redesign or, or uh, replace uh, uh, platforms. And in addition, if uh, external entities wants to process our ve their vehicles in our vehicle assembly building, by all means, we can also accommodate that as well. Uh, there still needs a lot of preparation for the project. We're doing a building reinforcements. Uh, as you can see, foundation work. What, we're, what they're doing now is the elevator landings. They're welding, they're installing the guardrails to have all the platforms be attached to the elevator landings for access. There is a total of 20 elevator landings, 11 that are fabricated, uh, nine that were reutilized. We remove miles of copper to, uh, that was used to, for communications for Saturn V, for a space shuttle, and we've replaced it with state-of-the-art equipment, uh, brand new I IT equipment, fiber cables, uh, enclosures that we have. What you see behind here is a state-of-the-art communications room that was uh, built, fabricated, or constructed for uh, the SLS vehicle in support of all the communication systems, all the information technology systems. It's equipped with uh, state-of-the-art racks, uh, com equipment, fiber, uninterrupted power supplies, and dedicated power feeds. This will provide all the new communications to the SLS. Twelve years ago, I started my career in the space shuttle uh, program, um, and for many of the workforce, it, it's the first time for many of us that we transition to a program. Um, in, in this uh, platform that we're standing on, that's a piece of history, I remember spending countless hours uh, processing the vehicle, processing the space shuttle, 
uh, getting it ready, working night shifts to get it ready for processing and launch. 20 years from now, 30 years from now, I'm looking forward to that same thing with SLS, uh, processing it using these platforms as the uh, vehicle to uh, check, test, uh, test the SLS uh, vehicle.